Well, Samara from Black Women TV. Hello, Miss Hunt. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good. So, you know, I knew the show was coming up and, you know, I knew half the cast that was in there already. But then I saw your name. I go, what? <laughs> Why? Why would that stand out? Most because I was like, okay, let's see. <laughs> like, you tell me what would it to say? Yes, because I know Raphael said he tweeted. You know, he saw your tweet about you know the, the movie, and they didn't think you would say yes. They were like, oh, she's not gonna say yes. They just went on a whim, and you did say yes. So what went into the preparation of you know? Because I'm sure you know. Granted, I've been watching your work on TV on the big and small screen for a lot of years, and I can only assume you get projects offered at you. So what went into saying yes to this? Um, well, he's leaving out the part where I'm the one who posted something first because I loved the movie. Um, he's leaving out the part where we, the three of us, formed a kind of unlikely friendship in the middle of the pandemic and sat outside of my lawn and watched movies on a cheap projector I bought. Um, he's leaving out that they were over here when they got the go ahead from stars to make the show and we all toasted. Um, <laughs> he's leaving out that the three of us tried to write a movie together. Um, to, because we found ourselves interested in the same things. And then he said, you know, I've, we've made these jokes about the series of blind spotting and there being a part and there actually is a part. And I take anything they would say, you know, if I have a friendship, first of all, and second of all, um, I'm moved by artists work, I'm gonna take it seriously if they say we're actually asking. And I thought, I, what I read was great. And then and then we had a big conversation about what I would need to, to feel comfortable doing, especially during a pandemic. And um, more than any job I've had, everything they promised happened. I, I, you know, sometimes you, before you say yes, you can ask for anything and they'll pretty much say yes because they, they want you to agree to be on the show. And then you get there and it's not exactly what they told you would be there. And the, you know, and this is the opposite. Everything we, uh, they promised me they delivered on double. So it's been a pretty great experience. You saw the movie. You knew what the characters are about. What did you want to make of Rainy, knowing they created this character for you? I mean, I wanted it to serve the story. You know, even more than looking for a good part, I look for a good story. And I thought Blind Spotting was a beautifully told, wonderful story. And so I trusted what they were planning. <clears throat> and it sounded very smart to me that they were lifting it out of the two of them and putting it on a different corner of this mass incarceration story <laughs> and that, that she would be the center of it, you know? And so I tried to look at it from, the, from Jasmine's character's point of view. She's sort of controlled and uh, wants things to be just so and sort of quiet and my job was to be the opposite of that and push all of her buttons and make her uncomfortable and be awkward and loud and then sometimes more right than she expects. And so I sort of formed what I was doing around what the story needed for her. Yeah, Rainy is not just your typical mom. She's just like, okay, as you mentioned, Ashley's controlled and resigned and you see Rainy and she's like, oh, she's just letting everything go, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah. Yes, you know, <laughs> and it's sort of like, okay, it's like, that's not like the type of role you would have thought somebody like, yo, dude, it's like, as for seeing you all these years and mad about you, it's like, oh, she's doing the opposite. She's <laughs> I, like, guess so. <laughs> I guess so. You know, yeah. and, and so when you play this part, obviously, you know, you help create this part, you know, along with the, with the creators out here, you know, um, what more do you want her to be? Because at the same time, we're looking at this character and we're also looking at you, but we're also tailoring to what the film was about for those who are fans of both. Yeah, well, they're smart. I mean, I wanted to make sure she was making the joke and not the butt of any jokes, you know, that she was in on it, or at least maybe we would trick an audience and trick the other characters and they could write her off as the mom and then not so fast. Um, I wanted to make sure she was funny. So I just pitched everything I could to add to the funny they'd already written. I wanted her to be surprising. Um, so mm -hmm. they seemed into all that. What's different being on this set? You know, you've worked between films and stage and TV. You know, everything is different in terms of the atmosphere and the environment and the cast. Mm -hmm. What's different on this set? You know, because a lot of these people are newcomers to the TV world. You know, and you're coming in here with the as the vet, basically, you know, so like what's different besides the fact that they are new doing this? 
Yeah, they all knew what they were doing. I mean, once in a while they would turn to me and say, Helen, what, what do you do when you, and, I'm, and I found that very surprising because none of these actors presented as people knew to what they were doing. They've all studied and worked and learned. So <clears throat> they thought they could get some kind of advice from me, but they don't need anything from me. Um, you know, it was different because of COVID. So we were all just wrapped up like mummies, which was a drag and tiring, to be honest. That's the, the only negative thing I can say about it. And everybody who's working during this time must feel this way. It's tiring to rehearse and talk about a scene with a mask and a plastic shield, actually two of each between you and the other human being. But we're all suffering with that. We're all missing human contact. Um, but it was a creative place. And, and Rafa and David set the tone and they're great. So that's it starts at the top, you know. Was there a bit of hesitation, as you mentioned, you know, because you know, obviously COVID and there's a few shows that are in production at that time, you know, and even though you knew these guys and it was a go, was there a little bit of hesitation like, okay, you know, as far as how is this going to work out? Because at the time, I'm assuming that when you shot it, shot it, there wasn't vaccination shots as there is now. Oh, no, it was terrible. Uh, it was super, super terrible. I mean, the first thing I said to them, I needed three things. I needed to know that we would collaborate on the scenes so that I could feel good about them. I needed to make sure her look was right and that they would pay whatever it took to get her whole look. Cause I thought a well-known person stepping into blind spotting, you know, Helen Hunt looking fake in blind spotting ruins blind spotting is basically what I told them. <laughs> so that I needed their help, both creative and financial to make sure I believed how this woman looked in this space. And I needed to not get COVID. I'm older than all of them. I was like, I can't fuck around here I really can't get sick <laughs> and uh and they got that and they were very buttoned up about COVID more than other sets I've heard of and and you know I think there's a spectrum now of how buttoned up sets are and this one was buttoned up and I think I probably made it more buttoned up I scared the crap out of them but they were good they were COVID people were good Rafa was super tight David was too they were determined to make it a safe place. You know, it's all fun, but if somebody had gotten sick, all this fun, beautiful creativity wouldn't have been worth anything. Mm -hmm. You know that work, you know, are you any good at poetry? <laughs> no, not like them. No, <laughs> I love it though. <laughs> you know, and so obviously, you know, uh, you know, for those who got to see it, you know, you did mad about you, you know, I think you got, in a way, it's a, that's the albatross because nowadays, all the time that we've all spent at home, everything old is new again. You know, people are discovering older shows. People want older shows to come back. You know, yeah. you guys were able to do it. You know, uh, is there a chance that if people wanted to come back, no matter what the reviews were, or is it like, oh, you got it out of the way. We're good now. Let me move on. I think Paul and I would do it. It's just, it was very strange, the process of getting it done. It wasn't like Will and Grace where NBC swept in and said, get back on to work, you know, that. I think they did that once and they did it with Will and Grace and it was amazing. So we ended up with a smaller network. Now it's on Amazon and it, it just, I don't know, the getting it made part was complicated. The creative part was not complicated. The creative part was fun. We found this great uh, actor to be our daughter, Abby Quinn. We had Peter Tolan, who's just, I don't know if you ever saw Rescue Me, but he's just an incredible writer to be our third point and uh we love each other we love these characters so creatively it was easy it was everything else around it that was hard so i you know we'd be up for it but someone has to step forward and say let's go mm -hmm. <laughs> what tickles your fancy nowadays especially post COVID, during covid as far as the work you want to do whether it be on a big screen or small screen you know obviously you mentioned the three things that you wanted from now but just in general you know for work yeah. <clears throat> what are you looking for um a great story, a part I haven't seen before that's, you know, fully three-dimensional. Um, and if it's funny, all the better, because I really did see during COVID, I looked over at my then 16-year-old daughter, like, how low are these spirits going to go during this weird time? And we would put in a piece of work, you know, a movie that and especially if there was some humor in it and I, it would change the day. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Um, so I like funny. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, anytime it can speak to the things that I care about, all the better. So that's why this job was pretty dreamy. Mm -hmm. You ever thought about getting behind the scenes with all the things that you mentioned? You've got the clout. You've been in the game long enough that you can come in and executive produce 
things that you want to see on screen or so? Yeah, I mean, I've I've written and directed and produced two movies and uh, executive produced Mad About You and directed a bunch of TV shows. So I've done more than than you know from your IMDb, Wilson. No, <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the fan right now and tell you that one of the movies that I watched <clears> on VHS <throat> back in the day was Girls Just Want to Have Fun. <laughs> yeah, I didn't make that movie, but I no, you didn't make it, but you, you my were in it. It was movie. like. That's the fan in me. I said, oh, <laughs> get that out of the way. Sometimes well, you want to tell somebody the movies you've seen them in and stuff like that. Yeah. But, you know, uh, but coming back to Blind Spotty, obviously, you know, for those who, who didn't see the movie, you know, do you believe <laughs> one has to see the movie in order to get the show? Because even you though the show is based to. on Ashley. You don't have to, but you're stupid not to. That's my theory. Uh, you know, no, the show 100% stands on its own, but see that movie, see that movie. It'll make the show richer, not that it needs to be. But it's a beautiful movie. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a it's a weekly show, which is great because not like all the episodes aren't going to air once. We can yeah, catch up. Got to come back. <laughs> and it could come back over and over again. So you shot your scenes already. So it's not like network. We got to still keep working. Where do we see you next in after this? It's me. I'm writing something with a writing partner for a long time. That could be another show um, if it gets if it finally gets its big green light. Um, and I don't know. Get me a job, man. Don't sit there. <laughs> You're going to always continue to work. I think, you know, as you mentioned, through your IMDb, anybody can look at any given channel and be like, oh, she's in this. So there's never a shortage of, a shortage of work. You know? No, I mean, well, there's never a shortage of work you've done, but any actor will tell you, except for maybe a moment or two in their career, you're always back to like, hope I get a job. It's just, I've heard Meryl Streep say it, you know, I, it's, it's. It's a journeyman business where you do your, you come in with your brushes and you hope you just sell them and then you do your best work and then you go to your next job. So that part never changes. You know, it's been fun talking to you. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, like the people will get a kick of watching your character, mm -hmm. you know, especially in that fr first episode, you know, it's like, oh, she's game. She's game. For <laughs> I am nothing if not game in this show. <laughs> you know, she's, I, I, that's what we did every week is laugh at whatever like okay she's willing to go there let's go and she's willing to reinvent she is, <laughs> she is. and that's great you know <laughs> it's yeah. good talking to you you Take too care. nice to meet you bye bye <laughs>